Gareth Linus, good afternoon. How are you today? I'm very well, Peter. Nice to meet you and nice to see you. Uh, nice to meet you as well, Gareth, and welcome to the Business Spotlight. Could we start by, could you tell me a little uh, about yourself and your background and, and your business, please? Certainly. Um, so, as you said, my name is Gareth Linus. Uh, my company is Icon Creative. We're a branding and web development agency based in Lisbon. And we we work with a lot of, a wide range of SME clients uh, from across Northern Ireland, UK, and some down in the Republic of Ireland as well. And how long how long has uh, Icon Icon Creative how long has it been in existence for? So Icon I set up Icon in two thousand and two, uh, so twenty two years this year, uh, and still going. <laughs> Fantastic, terrific achievement. Well done. Uh, mm -hmm. Does it feel like 20 years? Feels like 30 years, Peter. <laughs> <laughs> if you could retire, qualify and retire now, it would do well. No, no, no. It's been a, it's been a very enjoyable. It's, 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 it doesn't feel like 30 years whatsoever. It feels like I started it yesterday. Um, there's just, you never stop learning. You're always, always learning new tricks always dealing with different people so very enjoyable it's gone and gone in the flash of an eye and what if you if you think back to day one to 2002 what was the spark that led up what was the spark that made you launch icon in 2002 um my, my, my dad was self-employed and i'd always i'd really always admired him and the freedom that i gave him to give time to us as kids whenever we're, when i was growing up so I, I really wanted to do the same thing for my for my kids. So I was always destined to set up my own company. That's that's really wanted to, what I wanted to do to be in control of my time. Um, but I suppose the biggest the spark that that uh, that forced me into the in the situation would have been I was working um, in a tech startup company um, in the round the millennium, and. We had a couple of couple of good years doing some really great stuff based around uh, 3D scanning, pioneering some uh, technologies there, tinkering around with um, silhouette photography and 3D modeling and laser scanning and all sorts of um, all sorts of rudimentary technologies now, long before Apple or, or Google did any of that sort of, that sort of proper proper stuff. Um, but I suppose after after a couple of years, they, they I wasn't getting out of it what I wanted. Um, certainly not from a creative point of view. So I I went back to went back to my roots. I have a, I have a background in design. So you know I, I went to the art college, came out with a degree in design, and always wanted to use that of sort of a an, inqu an inquisitive and a sort of um, restless mind. I suppose <laughs> I think it gets diagnosed nowadays, but it was a restless mind back then. <laughs> So, uh, so, I, I, as a reaction to as a reaction to the sort of not getting what I was wanting out of that tech startup, I thought that might have been it, but it wasn't. Um, I set up Icon in the front room of my house, just me, a laptop, telephone, no customers. Day one, it was great. <laughs> wow, exciting times, exciting time, and you're still look, you're still here. Twenty two years later, it's fantastic. So, what about your target market? You know, what types of businesses or organizations really thrive when working with Icon, and what types of people do you enjoy working with the most? People, people are the most important part of it. So, it's you know, you, if you don't enjoy working with them, um, then you know, I, I think it's lost a wee bit the value that you bring as a as a company, regardless of what you're selling or what you're providing. Um, so SMEs is the short answer to, to the question. Um, companies with sort of a, between sort of five and 30 million pounds turnover. That's the sort of the marketeers answer. I enjoy working with companies where we can solve problems. We can help them communicate better with their clients, their customers, um, help them express the value that they bring to the market. And it's really down to, you know, it's helping people, anyone I can help who's on a growth trajectory, who's got money to spend in their business and they want to go to the next level. Any any company, almost regardless of size, I'm interested in talking to them. I enjoy their story, enjoy being part of the success. And um, what would you say has been your biggest lesson since uh, being a business owner? 
biggest lesson again it comes down to people as well you know it's it's learning to build trust learning to mitigate their risks that they take when putting trust in you um and the customers who customers who become friends or become colleagues you know if we don't make them shine if they if we don't make them look good in front of their boss or in front of their customers they won't want they won't want to work with us so helping mitigate the risk risk through building trust and that that's the biggest lesson that it's a people game and everything is about relationships everything's about reinforcing and helping and it's not a to me it's not really about selling it's about helping where you can uh, joining in in the vision of where people are going and trying to trying to contribute and if, if that's the biggest lesson what, what's been the biggest surprise to you over the 20 odd years biggest surprise peter is that we're still here <laughs> <laughs> so it's been a it's been an interesting 22 years in business um not from a not from a from our business point of view and our, our customers but it's how the the world has treated us you know that since since we started 2002 I suppose first real trading year might have been a year or two later you know it, it takes a while to, to you don't have to publish accounts for 18 months which is great at the beginning so you don't really know how you're doing for a, quite a while so by the time we found our fit or I we found our feet um we had the global financial crisis hit bottom fell out of the market we I've been doing as a company we've been doing a, a lot of work we're, sorry one second can you hear a beep no not at all sorry sorry, sorry I've got a ringing a ringing in my ear uh, that's all right. one second I'm trying to quit an application here <laughs> it's ringing ringing away sorry um what was the question sorry again I've what's been, been the biggest surprise the biggest surprise so far Biggest surprise is that we're still here. Um, so the challenges have been the global um, financial crisis. Whenever we've been working with a lot of re, uh, estate agents and property development companies, that vanished overnight. So the, you know, the lion's share of what we were doing, there were no prospects of it returning right at that time. Um, so we had to adapt. And I suppose becoming adaptive or adaptable to, to changing circumstances is really as part of resilience and as part of, you know, uh, persistence and sticking around whenever things get tough. So I suppose following, following the global financial crisis, we came up with Brexit, which sort of threw a bit of a curveball into the market. And then everyone got affected by the pandemic globally. So, you know, adapting again, adapting to how you work and um, how you deal with customers and where you, where you look for customers and how you can help finding new ways to help whenever they weren't doing any work. So, you know, resilience is really the thing that, that stands by us, or, you know, adaptability and resilience. So greatest surprise is that we're still here. Everything's conspired against us. I'm sure like yourself, you've, uh, you've had to adapt and overcome. So just glad to be here. Good stuff. Yeah, resilience, great, great trait to have. Uh, tell me... Uh... Over, over your journey, are there any business leaders that have either influenced you in the past or, or today or some something in between? T t tell me about that. For me, business leaders really fall into two categories, and that's that's uh, maybe just purely because we're in a niche. I'm in a niche area of design. Um, so I have a lot of time and respect for some of the leaders in that field, um, the more traditional field of business. Um it's a long and cliched list, but the traits that these people have is all, you know, I admire the traits more more so than the actual individual. Um, there's quite a long list of you've Elon Musk, you've Steve Jobs, you've Bill Gates, you've Larry Page from Google, you've oh the countless other people who have, who have created change in the world and how we how we live and how we work. And I suppose that the characteristics that I admire in them is that they've been brave enough to go against the grain, to do things whenever they're told it was impossible. People got in their way, you know, the government's got in their way and they overcame it. You know, Elon Musk's trying to fly to Mars. You've got Apple. Apple from, from being an expensive design computer at one point is in the hands of quite a few people. I'm sure there's plenty of people in, the, in this building that I'm in have an Apple phone. Um, 
and I'm talking to you on an Apple device. I've got another Apple device beside me. I've got five at home. You know, it's just I admire I admire Steve Jobs for for the vision. Uh, in that sense, now you could say that uh, uh, Cook has had something to do with that, but I, I attribute all the success to the original visionary. Um, so in, I suppose in the in the um, design world, there are quite a few people who have been influential in my life, and that I admire because of their achievements and the influences they've had. Um, you've um, Peter Saville. You've let me see. I have, I have a wee bit of a list, and I want to. I'm trying to think of here. Saul Bass, Paul Rand, um, Neville Brody, great typographer. It's, it's all of the sort of the Nike photographer, Nike advertising during the 90s. All of the just do it, all of that was sort of uh, Neville Brody, very influential. Um, and then, then there's one man who's um, more on the marketing side of things, um, a fella called Marty Neumeyer. Marty Neumeyer is um, he probably responsible for for finding what we understand as the term brand nowadays. Now, I don't think he coined it, but he certainly helped define it. Mm. Uh, and I suppose the understanding that, you know, companies don't own their own brand. It's the customers and the public that own the brand. It's the perception. It's the the rumors, the memories, the the impact, and and what people what people say about that company whenever they're not around. And that's you know to me that's influential and part of what. In my business, that's what we that's what we we trade on that. We sell that idea that we help build that reputation, I suppose, for companies. And what what is it that really what is it that gets you out of bed in the morning? What drives your passion for your business today? Passion. Uh, the big why that gets me out of bed. Um it's it's said better by someone else rather than me. Um, there's an author, an American author called Chuck Flickman. He's written a few um, number one selling business books. I think everyone's got a number one business selling book, but he he had the sticker. So uh, <laughs> I presume they were. <laughs> <laughs> so Chuck Flickman, he's, he's written a few great books on business and business process and how um, helping business owners grow, essentially. And his, his big why, he coined it, he said, to live well by doing good. And it's a very, very simple phrase. And I find it hard to better it. I can't make it any simpler. So I, I want to live well by doing good. And by that, I mean, I want to be fairly rewarded so I can you know, look after my family. Um, but I want to do good. And the doing good is helping people. It's doing the best job that I can. It's employing people. It's uh, you know contributing to society. And that is just trying to be part of something greater and bigger than me. Very good. Love it. What about your Desert Island podcast or book? What What are you going to be listening to? All hope is lost on a desert island, isn't that right? <laughs> so, so I don't think I'm going to be reading. <laughs> it would have to be something like the Bible if I was, but it's, no, 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 I'm not particularly religious, so it's not going to be that. Um, Business owners are generally expected to say something like um, Diary of a CEO by, by Stephen Bartlett. Huge amount of time for that. It's fantastic and has its place in it, and I do enjoy it. But if all hope is lost and I'm on a desert island, I want to be entertained. I want to learn curiosities. I want to be just teased with things that I know nothing about. And so I'm going to choose Joe Rogan's, the Joe Rogan experience for his podcast. And I think... I think every day would be entertaining. Yeah, I've I've, I've seen a few, uh, and yeah, I mean, I always used to associate him with the UFC uh, for whatever reason. I think it was it was that was that his when he started was that where what he was associated with, and then he's morphed into this like a brand himself now. Absolutely, I think I think he started off as a stand up comedian before UFC, but he's he's a funny man. He's a very distinctive personality, brash and bold and outspoken, and. Uh, not afraid, not afraid to, to challenge convention. So, yeah, UFC, I love UFC too. <laughs> and so you can invite any three people, alive or dead, to a dinner party. Who, who are you inviting? I think they're all alive, the people I would bring. Okay, good. I would, I would like to speak to them. <laughs> so I hope they're still alive. They were... <laughs> At the time of recording now, they're alive. <laughs> 
Uh, I'd love to meet Brian O'Driscoll. Just legend of Irish rugby, legend of world rugby, big fan of rugby. So I think the stories, the uh, tour stories, the dressing room talks, I think that would just be enlightening. It would be brilliant. It would be electric. Um, I also like, I also like, you know, like rock music. I like um, comedy. So um, someone else I would like to invite would be Jack Black. I saw him on Graham Norton, I think, a few a few months ago. I think it was him. I think no, I think it was on Graham Norton, and he played this kid's kid's saxophone like a professional instrument. It was incredible. It was so entertaining. I think he would just be so so funny to have there. Um. Also, not not being one, you know, I I like a wee bit of controversy every now and again. And not that I try to attract it, but I just uh, enjoy the odd, the odd challenging personality. So, um, I think I would like to see, I'd like to hear from Johnny Depp. Oh yeah, that would be interesting. <laughs> I, would, I, would, I would think I would invite him around for a mega pint. <laughs> <laughs> I think there's a few stories in there. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Might have to be a dry night. <laughs> yeah, I, I was just thinking that absolutely. Oh, brilliant! What a what a dinner party that would be. Uh, yeah. And Gareth, if you could go back in time and dish out some advice, I'm sure it wasn't that long ago, uh, but to your 18 year old self, uh, what, what would that advice sound like? Um, be very serious. It would be a get your act together early. That's what it would be. You don't need to do everything yourself. That's that's one of them. If 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 I was to if I was eighteen year old and I was going into business, I would employ people who are better than you. That's a, that's a given. Build lifelong relationships with people who help you and who advise you along the way. I think relationships nowadays can feel very disposable. Value the people who help you. I think there's a something along the lines of a standing on the shoulders of giants or helping people on the way up and not standing on the way down, something like there's some great uh, learnings in there. Learn about money. There's a thing. Learn about money early and pay yourself first. I think I'm, I'm, these are all pearls of wisdom that I'm not sure if it's accountants, accountants or counsellors who've said it to me. <laughs> <laughs> Start investing young. There's a thing. There's one on the money, on the money uh, theme. Um, have a plan. Have a plan early. Find a plan. Find a direction. Stick to it. And if things don't go right, learn from your losses. I suppose. Last would, you, time, would you have listened to that? That all sounds fantastic. No, no, no. I could probably write a book about what I should say to me. <laughs> <laughs> but no, no, absolutely not. You get out of bed whenever you want to get out of bed and you do whatever you want to do. So, uh, yeah, get the most out of each day, whatever you do, whatever it is, enjoy every day because, you know, not everyone gets to enjoy every day. Yeah, so, yeah. so true. Very good. So, Gareth, if somebody likes what they've heard and would like to reach out to you or Icon, what, what would be the best way for them to go about that? I'm happy for anyone to get in touch. I suppose LinkedIn's quite an accessible platform. Uh, I'm on LinkedIn under Gareth Linus and under Icon Creative. Um, happy to, happy to, uh, or, or through the website, I suppose. It's probably the most obvious one. Uh, it's icon-creative.com. You'll be able to get phone number for the office. I'm happy to speak to anyone, anytime, any way I can help. I'm absolutely delighted to hear about other people's stories and whatever challenges they face, see if I can help. Excellent. Well, Gareth Linus from Icon Creative, it's been an absolute pleasure. Thanks very much for sharing your story and your time this afternoon. Uh, I wish you every success for what the 95% 90, of 2024 that's left and beyond indeed. So thanks again, Gareth, and uh, ha have a fantastic year. Thank you very much, Peter. It's been an absolute pleasure chatting to you.